Welcome to another video. I was preparing to make part four of the video on linear transformations when I checked my email and I noticed that there had been a question where someone requested help with homework and I said let's just take a look at it and this was the question for what values of lambda is a solution unique? So you have a matrix multiplying a vector in R3 and this was the solution. If, the, if there is a unique solution, what would be the value of lambda? Now, the more I looked at the question, the more I knew the answer, but none of the options provided was the solution. So I was going, maybe I didn't understand what I was doing, but every way I look at it, None of these is the correct answer. Whenever we have an equation like this, where A, which is a matrix, multiplies a vector, which is a solution, and you're getting B. The solution is only unique if it is possible to, you know, more like you divide both sides by A, you know, when we do it in the matrix sense, what you're doing is you're looking for the inverse of A and you're bringing it here. So you can basically say that X must be the inverse of A multiplied by B which is the same thing as B divided by A. But in the sense of a matrix, we don't divide a matrix by a matrix. We find the inverse of this matrix. So we can say um, that you multiply the inverse of A by A from the left, and that would be equal to what we have on the right. However, you can, but we know that the inverse of the matrix times the matrix is the identity element. So this is Ix, which is this solution we have here. So, and remember that the identity matrix times the matrix of solutions is basically just the matrix of solutions, which is just negative one, neg A inverse B. So look at everything I have done since I started. I kept writing A inverse, A inverse, A inverse. So if you cannot find the inverse of a matrix, you cannot even find any unique solution for it. Okay? So all you need to look at in this problem is ask yourself, does the inverse of this matrix exist? The answer is no. Why is it a no? Because if any matrix is invertible, all the rows and all the columns must be linearly independent. And clearly, what it means is that you cannot have two rows that are multiples of each other. And this is clearly the same thing. This is even the same thing. It's not even a multiple. So just by looking at the matrix itself, you know this is not invertible because this one is the same as this one. They are not linearly independent. And if you go this way, you will notice that if you do row, reduce row echelon form of this matrix, there's an anchor point here. There is no anchor point for the second row here. It is right here. So we have skipped one and that is a problem. So this is not invertible because the rows are not in linearly independent. The columns are not linearly independent. In fact, you can make the bottom row equal to zero. All of the terms will be zero. Once you have a row of zeros, the, the matrix is not invertible. The determinant of this matrix is going to be equal to zero. There are so many things you can say just to tell you that this matrix is not invertible. And therefore, none of the options make sense. It doesn't matter what lambda is, the matrix cannot ge generate a unique solution. I mean, this equation cannot have a unique solution because this matrix is not invertible. Now, the most obvious reason is because the columns are not linearly independent.
there's no work to do. So you just say, okay, by theorem, AX, I just use this to explain, okay? But I'm just, this is the answer, or maybe I should write it here. Um, answer. No value of lambda gives a unique solution. Why is that? Because the matrix A is not invertible. Invertible. Why is it not invertible? Many reasons. <laughs> Let me give you one of them. It is not full rank. Which means when you write this in reduced row echelon form, you're going to have a row, yes. You're gonna have the next one, but the anchor is gonna be here. And this guy is gonna be a bunch of zeros. Zero, zero, zero. When you have a row of zeros, the determinant must be zero. That makes it not invertible. Okay, so that's a good reason to state it is not full rank, or you can say linearly dependent columns, the obvious one. Linearly dependent. So I know students may be afraid to say none of your options is correct, but that is a fact. None of the options is correct. Go back and ask your professor. Um, it's not going to work. Maybe this 4 was supposed to be here. Maybe. Then it would make sense. But if the 4 is part of this third column, there is no solution. None of, there is a solution, but none of these options. is. If it says none of the above, then it would be the answer. But saying all of the above, it would make it worse. Okay. What was I trying to finish it? By theorem, A times X equals B has a unique solution if and only if A is invertible. But A is not invertible if we have these problems. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.